today we're at the point of talking about four major characters of the Bible, Abraham, well, Ham, Abraham, Canaan, and Israel. We're back to that again. So if you've been, if you've been with us, you, then you know where we are of recent teaching. I also want to point out that today is the 37th day of my 50-day birth cycle. Not 50 years old, however. Remember, I taught you that there is a major move in your life of extraordinary events. And some of them could be negative, but most of them are going to be, all of them, 100% are going to be great and positive, ultimately for you. 50 days, 20 days prior to the actual day that you were born, and then 30 days after that will be the most powerful points of your life because that was the time in which you came into existence. And, of course, uh, the, the, all the stars were aligned up to that process. I'm in the 37th day. I was born on the 20th of February, so starting at February 1, the first 20 days before I was born. Now we're, today is March the 9th, and so I am, you know, 37 days. I got 13 more days to go of absolute power. In addition to the fact we've started a teaching that happens every Sabbath, at our Sabbath worship at the pulpit of power of the Outlaw World Missionary Church, where we are teaching the blessings of a sevenfold increase in our lives, whether it be economically, spiritually, socially, racially, etc. That would be a sevenfold, and, and also brain use, intellectual wisdom a sevenfold increase in our lives by observing the Sabbath the seventh day upon which God rested. And he, on this, he rested on the Sabbath. And then, of course, seven times seven is 49. So we are now in the process of going through 49 Sabbath worships where we are increasing in our abilities by sevenfold. Now, this will end on the 22nd of January in the year 2022. But let's say first you're earning $100 a week now, as an example. By the end of the 49 weeks, the seven times seven, 49 weeks, we are praying that you will have increased economically to earn, uh, if you're earning $100 a week, then you'll be up to $700 per week. If you are earning $700 per week, then you'll be up to $4,900 per week or $300 per week, you would be up to $2,100 per week, a sevenfold increase. Now, that's economically, but also in terms of your spirituality, your wisdom, your understanding, and other aspects of your life, including uh, the use of your brain cells to, be, to avoid Alzheimer's and all kind of other degenerative diseases because people aren't growing. So we're very challenged here at the Outlaw Ministry and every Sabbath, I'll be making mention of that at the pulpit of power every Sabbath at 10 a.m. on Saturday mornings. Now, today I want to be able to give a partial release. I asked God, his name is Jesus, if he would allow me to uh, explain the mysteries about Egypt that Moses did not tell us about such as who built the pyramids, how they were constructed, and several other things about the, the advent of medicine and government and mechanized armies that was so prevalent and Egypt being one of the world's greatest societies, if not the world's greatest society and the world's first great society. But Moses didn't tell us about that, so I've asked God for the opportunity to release that information, and I pray at the end of 49, seven, 49 weeks or seven times seven, that knowledge will be released. But today, I'm going to release just a partial amount of it. This is not terribly, taught, completely, you know, revelation, but it will be something that will be stimulation regarding the release of information about the pyramids and about the life and times of Ham uh, in Egypt. Uh, that Moses did not tell us. But let's get started, first of all, with um, these four men, Ham, Abraham, Canaan, and Israel. Quite frankly, and, and if you look at it in a holistic, you know, microcosm view of the Bible, 
Ham, Abraham, and Canaan and Israel, they own the Bible, including the prophets and Jesus. It is through the loins of Abraham that Jesus came. Uh, so quite frankly, when you look at Ham, Canaan, and, and, uh, and, and Abraham, they own the Bible. They, it, 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 that can be better said, I suppose, of the three sons of Noah that repopulated the earth after the great flood that Ham, that Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and uh, Japheth. And Shem is the father of the Semite people and the Shemite people who are known today as the Jews or biblically as the Hebrews. Ham, of course, is the father of the dark-skinned people, uh, mainly Af Egyptians. I wouldn't call them Africans. I'm not ready to go that far. But Egyptians, and then uh, then uh, Japheth is the father of the, uh, the what we refer to as white people, or in in, in a modern day vernacular, uh, Caucasian people. But I also want to point up the reason why Ham gets in there, and, and Canaan gets in there in a very powerful way is that Ham is the father of the Muslims. Abraham is the father of the Jews and the faithful and of Christ. But Ham, my father, is the father of the Egyptians, the Canaanites, and the Muslims. And it's very important that we include our, the Muslims into this, not in terms of their religious beliefs and practices or worship, but in terms of a national group. The Muslims aren't Jews. They are, they are not white people either. It, it, and and I, one of the things that we're going to have to do and that God's going to allow us to do is to help the Hamite brother who has referred to himself as African-American or he's called himself black or others have called him Negro or colored. Needs to understand that he and the Muslims are absolutely same mama brothers. Muslim ain't a Jew. He ain't Jewish. He don't have a Jewish mama. And he ain't white. Muslims are not white people. They're not Japheth. They're not Caucasian. But they are Egyptians. They are Hamites. And, 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 and Hamites, of course, are people that have erroneously and blasphemously called themselves African Americans or they call themselves black people. Others have called them Negroes or colored. But they're really Hamites. And we're going to uh, focus on that. Moses, of course, who was Egyptian born, Moses was born in Egypt, and uh, he wrote the Bible, and everybody else who has appeared in the Bible, including all the prophets, appear upon the foundation of what Moses wrote in the Bible. But he was born Egyptian. The first 40 years, Moses did not spend the first 40 years of his life in Passover, a Jewish understanding. Moses spent the first 40 years of his life as a Hamite. Uh, run till that. Yeah. And Hamites, well, they refer to themselves black people. They're not. It's a, it's a misnomer, something that, and they, or they call themselves African Americans. They're, they're not that either. But Moses spent his first 40 years as a Hamite. Now, Bible makes that clear. Ain't no denying that. You can even tell the Jews that. Moses didn't spend his first 40 years as a Jew. No, he did not. Mm mm. No, sir, read Bob. Spent the first 40 years of his life and the next 80 years of his life as a renegade from both being a Jew and a Hamite. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Canaan, however, on the other hand, who was the son of Ham, uh, was Egyptian born. That's right, in that regard. Well, he was born in the Middle East, I suppose, uh, the, the land that we were now called Canaan land. He was born in the land that later became his land. But he owned Canaan. Now, the man who was prophesied in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25 through 27, that he would be a slave to both the Jew and to the, to the, uh, to the Gentile, or to the Japheth, to the white, a Caucasian man, it was prophesied he would be a slave. There ain't no doubt about it. But he owned the land that God declared was flowing with milk and a Canaan land is what it was called. 
But God called it the land flowing with milk and honey. So Canaan, who was later going to become a slave, now in the biblical tradition and biblical history that cannot be refuted, owned the land that God said was a land flowing with milk and honey. Abraham, on the other hand, was a Persian guy. He finally ended up in Persia way across, you know, from Canaan land and from Egypt, way across the, the Arabian desert, down below Iraq and, and Kuwait, in that general area today in the area of the Persian Gulf, in the area of Persia, but it was known Babylon, called Babylon, or at the time but when Abraham was there, it was called Ur of the Chaldees. It's really biblical. It, it, then it later gets a name called Babylon. But it's the same place. Abraham was Persian born. He was born over there and well, he, he lived over there with his grandfather Haran and his father Terah. And uh, God told him to leave Ur of the Chaldees, which is in Babylon, on the Persian Gulf, which is hundreds of miles away from Egypt and going west and Canaan land. And he did. And he settled in Canaan land. Now, another ham was the first civilization of the Bible. That's right. Ham, my father, my father, that has the first mechanized, recognized civilization of the Bible. And my brother Canaan is number two. Now, there are other quasi-Hittites, Moabites, Amorites, Jezebites, Gergesites, you know, Assyrians later throughout the Bible as civilizations, but they don't get no real credit. Assyria gets a little credit. The Syrians, they get a little credit as biblical. But really, when you look at you do a close-up look at the Bible, the first five books, Egypt is the dominating Egypt is the dominating civilization right up until the time of Jesus. E Listen, even Jesus went down to Egypt. Moses went down, right? Well, Moses was in, in, born in Egypt, but Abraham went down into Egypt. Joseph went down into Egypt. Many of the prophets went down into Egypt. Even Jesus, Joseph and Mary, his mother, took him down in the Egypt. Egypt is the most dominating civilization of the entire Bible. Now, if you want to say, well, what's the more blessed one? Then you got to look at Israel because, you know, it gets all the goodies in terms of the blessings, the promises, the law, the word. And it, Israel is blessed. Ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> God, knows, God knows Israel is blessed. But the most dominating power of the Bible in terms of civilization is my father's land, Egypt. Yeah. It's true. It's true, my friend. It, it is absolutely true. And Abraham gets started over there in Persia, which we, uh, again, it said that uh, was uh, the, the, the uh, you know, later became Babylon. All scripture leads to Egypt. My father settled, my father Ham settled Egypt. All scripture leads to Egypt. All scripture leads to Egypt. All scripture. And even in the days of Jesus, People are still going down to Egypt. Egypt was the breadbasket of the world. And, uh, it, you know, if you want to compare a per capita civilization, Egypt still remains the greatest civilization. Now, and one of the things that I'm asking the Lord for is to help me to explain a lot of things that went on in Egypt that he has locked away from, from secular knowledge, such as the pyramids and other items that went on in Egypt. But it is, no, no doubt about it. You know, you can... You can like it or you can not like it, but Egypt is the greatest civilization of the, the Egyptian. My father's Ham and my son, my brother Canaan, who had Canaan land, that God said was a land flowing with milk and honey. But all scripture leads to Egypt, all scripture. Now, moreover, Canaan and Israel have the unique honor, Canaan, by that I mean the son of Ham, 
and Israel, the son of grandson of Abraham, they both have the unique honor of having being slaves prophesied by God, whose name is Jesus, um, that they would be slaves at the very beginning of the world, uh, that civilization as we know it after Noah. In Genesis chapter 9, God prophesied that my brother Canaan would be a slave. He'd be a slave to both the Jew and to the Gentile, or to, the, to the Japheth, a white man. It's in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25 through 27, emphatically wrapped up, locked down. Can't nobody do nothing about it. He's going to be a slave. And he was, and he is here in America. But that's not all. That, that God prophesied that that would happen. And you, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't take a pencil or an eraser and erase that out of the Bible, my brother. You can't do it. God said it, and that's it. And God don't lie, and his word don't return to him. You cannot take a pencil or an eraser and erase that out of God said that the so-called black man, or he calls himself African-American, after that lunatic Jesse Jackson gave him that name. He ain't that, and he won't answer to his real name, which is a Hamite. But God said he's going to be a slave here in America. That's just all it is. You can't erase it. But not only that, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, God told Abraham that his children would be slaves in Egypt. And that's just how that is. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. God spoke to Abram and said to Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So the Jews, the sons, the children of Abraham, were slaves for 400 years to my father Ham. And one may not at the time, and one may not even now understand, but I consider it an honor. Now, I don't appreciate the brutality, but God knew brutality was coming. He actually told Abraham, your people are going to get beaten. Maybe some of them are going to get hanged and castrated. And the God, the, 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 Your people are going to be afflicted for 400 years, but I, I'm, I'm sending them down there to do it. It's going to happen. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can not like it. Same thing with so-called black people here in America. We were slaves for 400 years. You know, you may not like it, and I'm not for all of the brutality that went along with it, but I can't erase God's word. But that's the power. When you look at the Bible, the Egyptian, I mean, Ham and Shem, they really own the Bible. They own the foundation of how it got started, and they were... in. They were honored, both of them, to be slaves. Now, Japheth was never a slave to anybody. But he owns the Christian church, I can tell you that. It's a place where Muslims don't go to Christian churches. Jews don't go to Christian churches. And Hamites, I'm not sure exactly where they should go there either. But white people, Jew, Jewish, Japheth people, they own the Christian church. Look over there at Rome, over there, over yonder in Italy. Italy, Italy. Over there in <laughs> Lord have mercy. Over there in Italy. They own the Christian church. Um, Hamites have their time. Of, the Jews own the Jewish synagogue and the temple. So where's the Hamites joint? It's called Atla. I'll get to that a little bit later on. You're not ready to hear that. You start jumping up and down and having conniptions if I tell you that the Hamite people, that theirs is their distinct as well, but you're not ready to hear that. Not yet. I know that. But I can, what I can tell you is that the Hamites were the last slaves, and they were owned by Japheth and Shem, who now possess the last holy land, which is Atla. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. You're not ready to hear that yet. But both the Shemite and the Japheth owned the Hamites as slaves in what is the last holy land. The last holy land of the Bible is Atla. That's what God said, the land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. Now, you're not ready to hear that, but it's okay. We're not going to fall out. Is that right? You're not going to stop listening. You're not going to get an attitude. You know, you, you're still going to go back to your Sunday church and go, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. But you listen to me because you, you, you don't want to be ignorant and crazy all your life. You pray to God you can somehow or another be recognized as doing the will of God rather than just joining some organization because the pastor got a private jet and holds his worship service in the Coliseum with a bunch of other freaks. 
you, you're, you're still interested in the truth. You know, I'm praying uh, that at the end of the 49 Sabbaths that I will be able to give my last, the, the last of mysterious uh, mysteries of the plant, of planet Earth. Let me tell you about that, and then I'm going to take a break. I'm praying that by the end of the 49 Sabbaths, which is another segment, I'm in my 37th day of blessings, right? I'm my 37th day of blessings. Around, centered around my birthday, which happened on February the 20th. 20 days prior to you, your birthday, you start experiencing blessings and power and uniqueness. And many times, adverse things come also, whether you realize or not, you, the best and greatest blessings you have happen first as an adverse event. Now, let me explain that to you. It's one thing somebody comes around and drops a ton of gold in your lap and says, oh, here's a ton of gold you can go sell it for, you know, I don't know, four or five million dollars, whatever it is, or four or five zillion dollars, a billion dollars. That's good. That's good. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's a blessing, I guess. But your best blessing comes through a negative situation when something absolutely bone-chilling negative comes into your life, like a diagnosis of cancer or some other grievous op the opposition that comes into your life. When some other negative, negative beyond negative gets dropped into your life and then God brings you out, that's better than having somebody dropping a ton of gold. You see what I'm saying? So even in the period of your 50-day birth cycle and you get a negative situation, it's going to be a blessing. <laughs> That's why I came in that time. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to turn out to be a blessing. But the problem, you got to go through the negative one to get to the blessing. That's how God works. Don't tell me why. Don't ask me why. You don't like the way he works. But they, they, you, you, if you... If, if you ever had a problem and God solved it for you, you, you'll understand why. So I'm in my 37th day, but we're also in a period now of our fifth week of the 49 Sabbaths. And I believe at the end of the 49 Sabbaths, God's going to give me the opportunity to be able to, um, to explain the last mysteries of planet Earth. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.